Hi, my name is John Covey and I'm the creator of Peptide, a protein building game. And what I want to do is just quickly summarize the rules for you so uh, it can hopefully save you some time from reading the rule book. If there's anything I missed, uh, hopefully you can cite the rule book and get any more detail from that. Okay, so there's four main types of cards in this game. You have your amino acid cards, which are right here. You have your RNA cards, and these are just two examples of the RNA cards face up because I have the game set up um, like you would start. Um, you have your organelle cards, this is your third set, and then you have all these other cards. Um, this methionine start codon, this vacuole track, this is a player's reference card, these are bonus cards, and this is a first player card. So all of these other cards just um, help the game run a little bit more smooth, but the, the main mechanics and the meat and potatoes of the game are right here. And these three types of cards and your um, player to or your ATP energy tokens here. Okay, so the game in a nutshell. At the end of the rules, I wrote this little section called the game in a nutshell. It kind of goes over the whole game really quickly. Um, the game consists of collecting resources. Those are your RNA cards and your ATP energy tokens. And then trading your ATP energy tokens for amino acid cards. This is the back of the amino acid cards. This is the face of the amino acid cards. And then you are trying to match your RNA cards with your amino acid card. And you'll see a color at the bottom. I'll show you more detail on that in a little bit. And that costs um, energy token to match that up. And then you're going to score by paying another energy token and flipping that card face down and essentially connecting it to your polypeptide chain, your protein chain. Your protein chain starts with this card right here, which is in front of every player. So when they score, they will connect another card to it just like that, and another card to it like that. And every time they flip one of these cards face down next to it, they score points. So that is the whole goal. So you might be asking, John, how do you take this card and flip it so you score points? Okay, here is how that happens. So the game is broken up into two main rounds. You have a organelle selection phase, and then you have a resolution phase. Um, so the core mechanic in the game, it's sort of like a, a, an open card draft, where you will have a number of organelle cards flipped face up. You'll actually have two cards for every player in the game face up. So let's say there's a three-player game. That means I'm going to flip um, six of these cards face up. There's five, one more. Okay, there's six. So now all players can choose from these six available organelle cards. Whoever is the first player, the youngest player starts with the first player card, unless you want to um, do it some other way. And the youngest player will select from these cards first. So let's say the youngest player or the first player takes the vacuole card, and then the second player wants this pretty amino acyl tRNA synthetase, and the next player wants this ribosome card, and now it's back to the first player again. And let's say she wants this ribosome card, um, and then you just keep going around like that and selecting until um, each player has selected twice. Not until these are gone, but until each player has selected twice. Now, once each player has selected twice, the organelle selection phase is over, and now the resolution phase starts. Now, before I move on to that phase, let me just make a note. There's two other things you can do during the organelle selection phase if you don't like the cards that are out there. You can either select the first player card, and then you will go first during the resolve phase as well as the next organelle selection phase. You'll go first. Um, this card can only be taken once per round. So once it's selected, it can't be selected again until the next round. The other thing you can do is let's say that this nucleus is out there. You do not want a nucleus. It's useless to you. You can still pick it up or any other card and then just play it in front of you face down, lay it face down. During the um, resolution phase or the resolve phase, you will essentially, you're saying I'm passing on that card and instead I'm just collecting one ATP energy token. So let me explain what each of these cards gives you. Um, first, you can take you, you can look at the back of the rule book and that will help you. There's also a player reference card, which is very detailed. There's two cards that allow you to collect resources. That those are the mitochondria and the nucleus. The mitochondria very simply allows you to pick up two 
ATP energy tokens. That's it. That simple. The nucleus. The nucleus allows you to pick up um, two face down RNA cards. So these cards here, you pick up two, you flip them, you look at them, and you choose one of them. Ha, huh, they just so happen to be what's out there already. Um, or that's the first thing you can do with that card, or you can just select one of these two that's face up. So either or. Okay, so that's the mitochondria and the nucleus. The third card I will point out is the, according to the back here, the trade card. With this card, you pay to ATP energy. So these guys right here, you pay these, and then you will select two of these cards once you once you have the amino acyl tRNA synthetase and you pay your two ATP energy, you will pick up two amino acid cards, you will look at them, and then you will choose one. The other one you don't want goes back on top, face down. Okay, so let's say I choose um, this card right here. That's the one I want. That's a tyrosine. Then I will take the valine and I will place it back on top of the deck. Okay, there's a couple things to note on these cards. Um, you'll see you have your tRNA molecule here if you're a a biology geek, you have your amino acid up here, and you have your mRNA strand here, which is what we are going to try and match. I'll go into more detail on that in just a minute. Okay, so we've described three of those cards. You have two more. You have a vacuole card. Now, a vacuole card allows you to do one of two things, depending upon whether you're playing a beginner's game or an advanced game. In the beginner's game, you only get to do one thing. That is, you select one ATP, and one RNA card at random. That's it. That's what it allows you to do. Now, if you're playing an advanced game, the vacuole allows you to move up one rung in either your ATP track or your RNA track. So what this vac, this is a vacuole track. And what this is, is it limits the amount of resources that you can have in your hand at any given time. So for your um, RNA cards, you can only have three RNA cards in your hand and three ATP cards in your hand at the beginning of the game if you're playing the advanced game with the vacuole track. The only difference between the advanced game and the beginner's game is, is this card here and limiting the resources in your hand. So if you choose the vacuole card, instead of picking up one RNA card and one ATP token, you can move either your ATP track or your RNA track up one rung. And that means you can hold more resources in your hand. Okay, now the last card is the ribosome card. This is the main actor. Okay, so first, when we look at our little cheat sheet over here, the ribosome card allows you to match your like-colored RNA cards with the amino acid card that you have by paying one, where is it at, right there, by paying one ATP token. Okay, so if I have an ATP token, I pay that back to the bank, and then I get to connect my three like-colored RNA cards, orange, green, and red, to my amino acid. That's it. Um, now, we will do this. Where is my start codon? We will do it next to our start codon, just so um, we keep things simple. Once we flip this card, it'll match up to the next of that start, start codon and, and follow that polypeptide chain. So let me show you how that happens. Okay, now we've got this matched up. We're ready to score it. We would need to, again, select the ribosome in the organelle selection phase, and then we would pay, again, one APT token. We pay it. Now what we do is we discard these three cards to the discard pile. We no longer get to keep them. And we flip this card, and it forms a chain. That card scores me points at the end of the game. How many points does it score me? Flip it back over. Look at the top right-hand corner. It scores me four points. The way the scoring um, structure is laid out is that if you need three different colors of RNA, that card is worth four points. If two of the colors are like colors, so let's say you need an orange, an orange, and a red, that card is going to be five points. And then if all three colors are identical, that card is going to be worth six points. So let me look up some examples here. I'll flip these cards over. Okay, right there. That is a six-point card because you need all the same colors to match it up. And then here, oh, uh, ah, here's a five-point card. You need a orange and two blues. That's a five-point card. Now, one more thing. 
If you are the first player to connect an amino acid card to your chain, you will pick up the three point card and place that um, in front of you. At the end of the game, that means you're gonna score an additional three points for being the first person. The second person, obviously, the two, the two point additional card, and then the third person to score an amino acid card gets the one point bonus card. Okay, so when does the game end? Um, as soon as this card, the stop codon, is pulled at random from the amino acid draw pile, then the game ends immediately. How does the game set up? You're gonna put your organelle cards here, your ATP cards here, your amino acid cards here, your RNA cards here, and then um, you're gonna flip two RNA cards face up because players can choose from those or remember they can draw two from the top and choose one. Now, the only really kind of tricky thing is this amino acid deck. What you're gonna do is you're going to separate that stop codon from all the other cards. And then at random, you're gonna remove six cards. Three, four, five, six, I think that was six. And then you are going to take your stop code on, and you're gonna shuffle it in there. This is hard to do with one hand, but bear with me. We're gonna shuffle it in there so it's totally random. And then we're gonna take that random set and we're gonna put it at the bottom of the deck. Okay, now when we play the game, we know that the first, what, 14 cards are not gonna be the stop code on. But after that, any one of those cards could randomly be the stop code on, which will end the game immediately. Oh, and one more quick note. Uh, this game was mimicked after the process of RNA translation, which is turning an mRNA strand, um, which is a essentially a genetic sequence, into a protein chain. It's a process that happens in your body all the time, almost nonstop. It's very important to biology. I tried to keep this game as accurate as I possibly could. Uh, however, you can imagine I had to take a few liberties because the mechanics would not match up 100%. Um, but we tried to be as accurate as possible. After playing the game, I really think you'll get a feel for the biology and understand a lot of the organelles. Um, these guys are the major actors in the process. Okay. I think that's it. If you have any questions, please email me and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video and learn how to play this game. I hope you've learned something and um, I really hope you enjoy the game. Thanks a lot.